Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this special edition of the VSI podcast on children's rights. As you may be aware, this year's Child Justice Week is commemorated under the theme Collaborative Implementation of the Children's Court Act No. 12 of 2022. Now, to discuss today's topic, I have a very special guest joining us on this podcast. I will allow her to introduce herself instead. Greetings to you, Imela. Thank you for having me. I'm Nandi Pangulube Chukobo, and I am the National Program Coordinator of the Child Justice Forum Zambia with the Judiciary. I'm glad to be here. Nandi, it's an honor to have you on this podcast. Dear listeners, specific to today's topic, you may wish to note that the Child Justice Forum's main goal is to ensure the practices within the justice system guarantee equitable treatment of children in the justice process through collaboration with stakeholders in the implementation of the Children's Code Act. Nandapa, what kind of children is the Children's Code Act aiming to help? And how is Zambia's child justice system structured to help these kinds of children? Interestingly, the Children's Code is quite holistic in terms of the category of children that it seeks to protect. Um, What we see is rather than focus on a specific target group, The Children's Code has actually catered for the protection of uh, vulnerable children holistically. So children without parental care, for instance, um, victims of violence, abuse and neglect, um, children who are living on the streets. And then we look at children who are on the move, like uh, migrant children, refugee children. Um, and of course, uh, children who are in conflict with the law, among others. So basically, we're looking at children in contact and in conflict with the law. And our child justice system is designed in such a way that there are several stakeholders, different institutions, be it government, um, quasi-government, non-governmental institutions, all working to address the welfare and protection of a child. And these institutions' mandates may vary, but the comforting thing is that there is an institution to deal with different aspects and different spheres of a child as provided for by the Children's Code Act. I'm aware that there are several programs undertaken by the CJF for the welfare of the children and that pre-trial diversion is now provided for under the Children's Code Act. Can you please explain this to us? Yes, Imela, quite correct. There are several uh, programs that CJF has been undertaking um, from its inception. And pre-trial diversion is one of those programs currently that we are giving such priority to in terms of implementation, in terms of capacity building. And this is because pretrial diversion really is an intervention that is absolutely necessary for our children in Zambia. And really for the country as a whole because of its um, immense benefits uh, towards what sort of children the country has or rather what sort of adults will emanate from the children that we have currently. So pre-trial diversion is an intervention where instead of a child going through the criminal justice uh, process when they have come into conflict with the law or alleged to have come into conflict with the law, they are dealt with through other mechanisms for their rehabilitation, for their adequate transformation and for their integration into their communities. What do I mean by by that? 
simply put, instead of a child who has committed an offence being charged by the police and then proceeding to being indicted by the National Prosecution Authority and then proceeding to trial in a court of law, this child at the earliest point of contact with the justice system, which is mostly with the law enforcement um, agencies. So that would be the Zambia police or the Drug Enforcement Commission or the um, wildlife uh, agency, depending on what offense really has has been allegedly committed by this child. So at the earliest point of contact, the institutions that are mandated with charging of offenses would instead deal with this child, first of all, assess the criteria or the circumstances of the case, considering this this um, person is a child, which is um, any person that is um, 18 years and below, but of course, within the age of criminal responsibility, which would be between 12 and 18. So they assess the circumstances of the case. And if it is determined that it's a case that is suitable for diversion, having met the criteria, um, then this child is then handed over to the social welfare department. And let's make mention that because at the point of contact with the police, a social welfare officer or a child welfare inspector should have been contacted uh, by the law enforcement agency that has this child. So then the social welfare department will undertake an in-depth assessment of the circumstances of the case, the offense that has been committed, the circumstances of this child's life, home, school, community, whatever the case may be. An in-depth assessment ought to be conducted in order for the social welfare department to ascertain what sort of diversion measure should be given to this child, what sort of institution will be the best to take this child in for rehabilitation. And I mean, the measures will range from rehabilitative measures to restorative measures. So also with that, the social welfare department will need to assess and, and see if what sort of measure this child should be availed to. Ultimately, the goal of assessment is to ensure that the correct measure is given to this child so that the root cause of the offending behavior is actually addressed. So if it is that this child's offense is as a result of a broken home, you know, a, 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 a toxic environment that they come from within their home, then restorative measures should probably be the best alongside, of course, counseling, but the families would need to be brought together. So there may be need for um, a family conferencing. And if it is a drug problem, alcohol, substance abuse, that too would need to be established so that the rehabilitation in a case where, for instance, the child is actually addicted to whatever substance they're abusing, the medical uh, personnel will also need to be involved. So this child will also need to be availed to a health facility to um, try and detoxify and take this substance out of the system as this child undergoes intense counseling and because reintegration is an important part of diversion, all of the stakeholders, especially at community level within the family would need to be involved through the process so that when the child is 
is done with the process of rehabilitation, they then can be reintegrated properly back into their community. So if this is a school going child, for instance, they would need the school um, probably um, guidance and counseling department to actually come on board as well to help this child adequately reintegrate back into their school. So it's diversion is truly an important intervention. And the rationale now is really that rather than have a child go through a criminal justice system and then come back as an adult offender, probably hardcore, which then is a disservice to our country, we would rather at the earliest possible time rehabilitate these children and have adults that meaningfully contribute to our country's uh, development. As complicated as it might sound, I have really benefited a lot from your explanation. I believe our listeners have benefited too. Moving on to the key players in the child rights world, the stakeholders. Can you give examples of how different stakeholders, including government agencies and civil society organizations, are or can be actively involved in the implementation of the Children's Court Act? That's an absolutely important question because the implementation of the Children's Code Act, in fact, the adequate implementation can only be done collaboratively. And that is the reason why our theme for the Child Justice Week this year has focused on the collaborative implementation of the Children's Code Act, because this cannot be done by one particular institution, um, regardless of whether it is the judiciary, for instance, or the National Prosecution Authority, this has to be collective. It's a collective effort. So what do these institutions that sit on the on the forum do? What is their responsibility or how do they play their part in implementing the act? Primarily, I would say priority would be to build capacities within the institutions because this act was enacted last year, August last year. So it's relatively a year old and a few months. And as we know, as with any law, when new provisions come in, they affect procedure, they affect implementation, because obviously institutions are used to how the old repealed laws operated or basically how they affected their operations and implementations. So with the new provisions that sit in the Children's Code Act, there's, there's need for institutions to actually acquaint their personnel on the new provisions, how procedure has been affected. And I'd like to say that in most cases, for the children's code, that is, I'll speak for the children's code, I think it brings about quite a lot of positive change, even in terms of pr procedure, for the benefit of the child, that is. A lot of protection has been provided for by the Children's Code Act, and a lot of provisions sit in there to protect a child uh, victim, a child witness, a child who is in conflict with the law, their rights have been spelled out there, but also procedure has been spelled out on how these children should be handled by stakeholders. And because of that, there is need for stakeholders to begin to build capacities of their personnel so that we can all adequately handle these children without being the ones um, uh, victimizing them over and over again, um, having already in, in some cases undergone a victimization at the hands of perpetrators. So as, and, and that is why child safeguarding is a provision of our Children's Code Act now, because institutions need to put in place mechanisms to, to safeguard children that come to them or come into contact with them as they process them through the justice system. So yes, respon responsibilities are key for institutions to undertake. And, and, and so I would say that the Children's Code Act 
has really given us beyond a mandate it has given us responsibilities as stakeholders to ensure that these children properly experience the justice system not to cut you short nandi in what ways will enhanced collaboration among stakeholders particularly at the district level contribute to the effective implementation of the children's court act interesting when you mention collaboration i like to refer people to the child justice forum logo if you look at it you'll notice it's a gear and a gear is responsible in a machine to drive it yeah a gear is responsible for driving the machine and this logo was deliberately picked or rather designed to speak of how that the child justice forum operates the gears will lock into each other in order for the machine to move likewise institutions must synergize they must create linkages amongst themselves in order to drive meaningful change now for the child justice forum we realize that these changes cannot occur at national level for instance the changes need to occur at the local level at district level at community level and as such institutions at district level ought to collaborate effectively in order to deliver the change in order for the interventions to actually produce an outcome that is for the benefit of the child so enhanced collaboration really is key and so institutions need to begin to work together they need to begin to create linkages they need to begin to provide synergies or create synergies am- amongst themselves in order that they adequately communicate cooperate and collaborate without communication for instance it's it's not possible to adequately collaborate and so institutions must deliberately communicate amongst themselves and this is why the child justice forum provides a platform for stakeholders to sit at a table together identify the existing challenges at the district level and devise interventions to address those challenges that children are facing within the district thank you nandi for your comprehensive explanation let's briefly scratch on the justice system What role do members of the communities and schools play in realizing a child-friendly justice system? And how can they collaborate with the Child Justice Forum? Imela, the communities play an extremely important role in driving transformation in the child justice sector. Without which we wouldn't be here as institutions or stakeholders that are sitting on the child justice forum because the child comes from the community if anything the community should be the biggest stakeholder playing their part in ensuring that the child experiences the child justice system in a manner that is for their benefit in a manner that helps them that creates a holistic environment for them to thrive so the schools the churches the community at large they need to be a part of the interventions that we devise as a forum in fact we cannot implement these interventions without the community playing an important role and this is why we are focusing on community based interventions so even for the rehabilitation of a child and intervention we are focusing on the community to be the ones to take this child in to be the ones to help with transforming and rehabilitating this child because ultimately the child goes back to the community the child lives with the community and so they need to be there and coexist with within their community they also need to properly reintegrate back into their community that way this child does not carry with them a stigma of having 
been engaged in criminal vices, if at all it is a child in conflict with the law. But if it's also a child that is a victim of abuse, there's a, a likelihood of carrying stigma of being a, a victim of abuse. So we use the communities also to ensure that even victims of abuse do not carry a tag on them and are not victimized by their community. So the, the community, the schools are very important. And this is why for the Child Justice Forum, it was realized that the Ministry of Education is a key partner and thus sits on the forum because through their structures within the school, they could then take on these children and ensure that they properly reintegrate. Uh, this is if they're school going children, they properly reintegrate back into their schools and then can attain an education just like any other child who hasn't been in contact with the justice system. Great explanation, Nandi. Thank you so much. Time is so jealous. I have enjoyed hosting you on the VSI podcast. To wrap up, what are some of the key messages you have for the members of the community? And how can they continuously participate in the commemoration of the Child Justice Week? My message to the communities out there is that you too are stakeholders in the transformation of the child justice system. My second message is that the Children's Code Act has come for the benefit of the Zambian child, which is ultimately for the benefit of our country. This law is good law. It is not here to merely highlight the rights of children, which for some people will think we are enabling children towards delinquent behavior. To the contrary, the act provides for, for responsibilities as well. The responsibilities that a child has to his family, to his community and to his nation at large. His responsibility towards preserving our cultural values. So this law is actually good law. It is there to ensure that our children are not traumatized by the justice system, which typically, even for an adult, can be quite traumatic. It provides safeguards for how us as stakeholders, as institutions dealing with children, handle these children to ensure that they do not undergo secondary victimization. Safeguards that we stakeholders are not the ones that are inflicting the pain on these children, but that we are professional in the way we deliver our services to these children. So my message to everyone really is to come on board and give the implementation of this code the support that it deserves. In your different capacities out there as community members, you too can join hands and help provide the mechanisms at community level to help these children rehabilitate, to help these children reform, to provide safety nets for children that have undergone abuse at, in, in, in different forms. But really my message is that the act deserves the support and deserves participation from each and every individual to ensure that it is adequately implemented. Thank you so much for having me here, Imela. I am delighted to share with the communities out there what the Child Justice Forum is really all about and how we are really just hoping that children can ultimately benefit from the services that the different stakeholders that sit on the forum provide and also benefit from the community structures that have been created to help rehabilitate children and reintegrate children into their communities and families. Thank you so much. Thank you. There you have it, dear listeners. I was joined by Nandi Pangulube from the Child Justice Forum. Thank you for listening to the VSI podcast on children's rights. Remember, this podcast isn't just about information. It's also about inspiration and action.